I have stuff. I don't know if you do this in your act. I have stuff that I'm really embarrassed about, mm -hmm. but I like doing it. Yeah. Like I have one one thing I do. It's the best. That I'm, I'm, I'm so ashamed of, but I, <laughs> I but I do it anyway. Oh, you want to hear something really weird? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> That's the bit. Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. Do you need a new mattress? Go to sattva.com slash the shit now for $200 off the next purchase of your Sattva mattress. It's the shit. And welcome to another episode of Your Mom's House. We're here with a very special guest. Just a quick pop in. You know him as professional go-kart driver, Daniel <laughs> Ricardo. Daniel's Whoa! here, everybody. Oh, what the? It's, uh, it's Formula One week Formula. here in Austin, Texas. Daniel, thanks for stopping by. Thanks. Uh, I'm really just going to laugh the whole time. That's all good, man. You know, I know what the real F1 fans want to ask you, and that shit is boring. So let's talk about that F1 puss, man. It's got to yes! be incredible. Top-notch shit. Oh, my God. It's like Euro puss, It's so too. elite, too. It's yeah. like rich pussy. Yeah. It's not like that bogan pussy from back home. Yeah. It's like that top-tier stuff. Yeah. <laughs> What's oh the best? Gosh. Russian hose? <laughs> Eastern European, obvi. Oh, yeah. Hungry. Oh, yeah, Budapest. Yeah, Budapest. Budapest. Uh, yeah. So are you born there? I'm no, deflecting no. here. My parents, my parents. <laughs> but so when you're, yeah, okay, but where do the chicks go craziest? When you're, you're not married. You can talk about wait, this. I think my, wait, I think my phone's ringing. I'm just going <laughs> to take this call. <laughs> He's yeah. not sponsored. Yeah, no, yeah. it's um, look, it's um, it's a wild thing it's to get into. It's got to be great because I mean, you have great got, teeth. Like, he's got oh, the yeah. best he's teeth got, on that he's show. He's handsome. Yeah, got a great, and he's fucking yeah. skilled. This guy's one of the best drivers in the fucking I know. world. You've been driving since you were two. Maybe. Nearly. Yeah, I know. Nearly. Yeah. Nearly. Then, this is what what I learned about you watching the TV show. Oh, hey, did you see me take that corner at 190 miles an hour today? Yeah. No big deal. Get on your knees. That's what you fucking do. <laughs> Stupid bitch, am I right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. <sighs> I just, I, I'm not even going to talk. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm getting like a free show. <laughs> so, no, but you know what? Um, it is like, uh, I think the Netflix show, Drive to Survive, I don't know how what your guys' actual personal opinion is on it. To me, it has broadened, right, your audience, where F1 is traditionally very like popular in Europe, I think in the Middle East, and then it's considered an elite level. Like if you're into F1, like everyone knows the fan base has, you know, it's all like private jets and and like Rolex, like it's all like this elite sport. And I feel like it's broadened your sport into like more like uh, blue collar people are like, this is fucking wild. I didn't know about because they really did a good job of so dramatizing cool. everything and, you know, create, I know it's creating story, you know, how you produce a show, but it created storylines that people are like falling in love with these drivers and the teams. And like, I don't know, has it changed? Do you feel like it's changed the fan base? Massively. 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 Are we off the topic of... Yeah, F1 puss. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah, get yeah, back yeah, there, yeah. though. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll come back to it. Oh. We'll come back. They, they just flash their titties at you when you drive <laughs> yeah. by, right? Yeah. So it's... All right. It really has changed, like, drastically since, uh, since the series. Because, as you say, like, it was a very, like, niche group of followers that was, like, you, you kind of... F1 is some people's life like it's all they it's the only sport they love and they're into but then there's kind of your basically the rest of the world who follow every other sport but f1 and it was just it was very wasn't very accessible for many years and especially because even like the simple fact we wear helmets like you don't really you couldn't really put a face to a name right mm. um so like the the show also just like lets people in personalities stories like everyone can kind of buy into that and um yeah it makes it seem normal to some degree yeah i mean and it, it makes mm -hmm. you appreciate the skill level i think you know the one of the things the aspects that i love about the show is like if you're a, a football like an american football fan you really start to appreciate the separation of a let's say a, a really good college player and then he gets in the NFL and maybe doesn't make the team. And you're like, what? How is that even possible? Like he just he misses it by this margin. And you guys would, or the show would highlight, you know, like a Formula 2 driver, right? Like the, the tier below mm -hmm. coming up. 
and just like not pressing and not not making the cut and you're like this guy is just like this far from being like super elite mm -hmm. and that's a fascinating thing to watch that somebody's like really good at this but missing the margin so you're starting to like you, you feel like you're learning more about you know what it's i mean crazy. like the level. I, I love watching that shit it's well i mean where it's like the crazy thing is like a tenth of a second yeah. is is the margin like it's you know, if you if you say a second is the gap, a, a second is the difference between me and you. Like it's a second's an eternity. Yeah. Sorry, no disrespect. But no, no, no. <laughs> but like, so in terms of like the the fine margins that the sport like works with is insane. And I, for me, still the craziest thing about the sport is there's twenty of us. That's it. That That's is twenty it. drivers in the world. That's it. At least you know, obviously in Formula One. So, you know, it's uh, you think of all like the top tier sports. NBA, as you said, like NFL, yeah. like I don't know the roster, but I know it's a lot more than 20 people. Yeah. So you, it's just, there's a lot of, there's special a lot of people person. trying to make it. It's, so yeah. I mean, special. that was, and the other thing that, you know, you, you, have, you start to develop an appreciation for is just like how that whole team has to really work. To, like, I think I want to say season one, I, I think it was you where you were pulling out of the pit and like, I think it was you maybe. And like the, you know, the tires didn't come on. Like they, they went to like, cause it's, it's so fast tires off on and they didn't go. And you're like, how the fuck can that happen mm -hmm. at this level? But it does. And then it changes like that whole race. And maybe it has an effect on your season. That shit is super dramatic too. That's it's the, like with the sport, you can, there's so many variables and again, like you could put everything into it and do everything you can. And, and, it could all be going well and then something like that could happen or a mechanical failure or there's so many things out of your control that yeah. can happen as well. So like I constantly battle with like a love hate with the sport because when it goes well, it's like the highest of, the highs, highest of highs, but it can also rip your heart out pretty often. So. Sure. Yeah. What can but, you do? You can't control much. Just like stand up comedy, right? Yeah. Some lunatic pops off on your show. Yeah, and you then, just really can't do shit. But also um, I'm always surprised by your athleticism. Like you guys have to, did you I say didn't good know. looks or athletic? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I said good looks earlier. Good oh. looks. But I mean, it's so wild that you have to be in really good physical shape. You guys are all pretty lean. like. Mm. Right? And I did Peace. not know this because you just assume, oh, this guy's driving like a truck driver. Maybe they can weigh 500 pounds. And like, you really can't. Like Tommy and I went to a garage and yeah. he showed you showed me that old Formula One car. Yeah, they had Schumacher's, one of uh, his old Ferraris uh, And it's tiny. Here. So, yeah. yeah. So like you can And you guys are like, fat. it looks like, it seems like you're laying down in that shit yeah. yeah we're properly the position's so weird um and also yeah if you like see inside the cockpit it is so small and especially then where your your feet go it's uh it's very compact so yeah we need to be like small i guess or light just to fit simply and but it's also for performance undrivable oh, for to like your yeah. regular like a person who's never like can't really drive it uh, i think you'd be like you'd be able to pull away like uh -huh. you'd be able to get going mm -hmm. but the problem is it's it's one of those things where the faster you drive in a way, the easier it is because the temperatures are up, the tires work better. Uh -huh. So it's like you, because you, you would kind of drive too slow that it would, you would keep spinning in a way because everything would be slow. so cold yeah. that you would just have no grip. You'd have like no downforce, like uh -huh. no like suction to the track. Sure. So it's like the faster in a way, the easier, but to get to that level, yeah, not, you're not going to jump in and do it. So let me ask you this. You would suck. In com I would Crazy. suck. Yes. Thank By the way, oh I just, God. I did, I have a racing vlog to show you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've sent me a few, a few little videos before. Of Wait till you see my, uh, my latest one though. You're going to be, you're going to call some people for me. And you're going to be oh like, we need to get this God. guy in. What's, what's your current weight? Are you, are you I'm fighting to, weight? I'm, I'm down to 206 right now. All right. I'm trying to do the math. I work in kilo. I reckon you got to get to like 170 to start being respectable. Get the That's fine. Wow. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Who's the do heaviest they... guy in, in F1 right now? I don't know. Um, like put it this way. If we're, if we're kind of more than 70, I'd say like 73 kilos, it's a disadvantage. Kilos. Maybe that's like 160 pounds. Yeah. Cause that's, uh, that's 2.2. Um, so it's yeah. 73 Damn. times 2.2. So if you're above that, you're, one costing yourself lap time. Oh my god! Holy shit! And do they weigh you like flight attendants in the eighties before you get in your car every day? We'll get weighed. I want to say four times a day. Stop. Yeah. So I only need to lose forty five pounds, and I can do this. <laughs> it's chill. And you have to, <laughs> you have to 
time travel and start at the age of two and then get rid that, of that. No, you don't. You haven't seen me drive. I'm super scared. <laughs> and you need a divorce with all the. Let me ask but, you this. Oh, that so too. Damn in it. comedy, the groupies are called chuckle fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys call them motor mouths in your world? <laughs> I, we do now. You do now. Uh, we do now. Yeah. I don't know if there's a term. Um, yeah. Oil guzzlers? Yeah, that's Oil. Good. Yeah. Oil changers? Uh, guzzlers was guzzlers better. Is yeah. better. yeah, you call them drain yeah, pipes? Yeah, what do you call them? Yeah. Drain pans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. If they're nice, we call them like sweet fans. Uh -huh. Yeah. If they're not, we call them like psychopaths, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but no, they're, they're all pretty nice. Have you ever feared for your life on the track? Like, was there a day where you're like, this is it, I'm fucking dying? So, no, but um, it was pretty scary recently. So actually, the um, in Suzuka, uh, Japan, it was like torrential rain. And I don't know, the, the cars this year have so much more spray. Like when you drive through the rain, the spray that comes off is just visibility so bad. Mm. So... I remember the start of the race, like we could not see anything unless you're first with Fuck. no spray. Like it was, it was like the, the worst conditions I've ever driven in. And you kind of just, yeah, I was definitely holding on, just hoping that I was going to just make it through. I have, yeah, I have a real race question to ask you though. And this, and this really, I'm for real. This is not, <laughs> I'm serious. One of the things that the show highlighted to me uh, was the fact that it feels like, and I, this might be like such an entry level amateur question, but it feels like the that a good part, a good amount of the teams are just participating for the sake of participating because they don't have. You learn like the money behind the, you know, like the big teams are like, you know, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren. Like where you guys have like where there's these hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollar teams, and then the other teams they're like. You see a driver who will go like, well, I can't really compete with these guys. We don't have to name them all, but with these guys. So it'd be great to switch to like a, essentially a wealthier team. Are those cars not at the level? Like how much of this is the car when you have elite drivers where you go like, you know, is that car just really not competitive with the other guys' cars? That's the big, um, I mean, it, kind of goes back to like a little bit of the when i said like the love hate part of the sport it's some some form of like the hate part is that you it's not an even playing field in mm -hmm. terms of like the the cars are different they but, are right yeah and it's you know like a world champion is going to be in it might not always be the best car but it's going to be in the top say two cars on the grid um you're just not going to be a world champion with uh, at, at, let's say at this current stage, like a smaller team, you know, because it's, they don't have the the resources, the infrastructure, the development, because during the year as well, it's, so every year they build a, a car from scratch. Every team starts fresh. What? And then that. through the year, they will keep like developing that car. So you might, it's, it might be that you actually start off like on the front foot and you're there, but yes. then six months later, you're now towards the back because everyone's developed at a, at a quicker rate or a more efficient rate. Mm. So it's kind of it's fascinating wild. to watch you guys. Like also mm. you see this on the show, especially because you're, you're seeing behind the scenes kind of conversations, get into an, a new car and go like, yeah, this is fucking, this is an adjustment, mm -hmm. right? Cause you assume, I think as a spectator, you're like, they're just getting in another formula one car. It's, it's painted car. different. But, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you guys are like, this one's fuck. I'm, I'm just like learning this car. Um, but you but also you appreciate your guy's level of skill because you hear hearing you talking to your pit and being like you know you guys feel and sense everything mm -hmm. so like in such detail because you're so experienced and so elite you go like wow this car really is an adjustment for this driver it's and and every team like have i mean because each team say i'm just like on average maybe each team has a thousand people so that's a thousand people Jesus. for two cars yeah so you can also see with all that let's say all those brains, you can very easily develop a very different car to, you know, the next team and, and so on. So they do have a different feel. Um, but it also, as I say, like the hate part in a way is like not having equal machinery, but it's also, that's part of like the, the challenge of F1 is trying to impress, you know, to put yourself in a, in a top seat or a top team. So it's yeah. like 
the fight to get like a good seat is is part of the fun as well have you announced your plans for next year Mm, i'm i mean i'm not i'm not gonna race next year like i'm not gonna race f1 so my eyes are still certainly still set on f1 but it's so with everything that's gone on i'm like i need the time off Mm -hmm. and i need um i think the way kind of the contracts and everything shapes up i think 2024 is potentially smarter as well for me um, to like set my eyes on that and then get the time off to just reset and and on a, on a, when you reset and like I obviously you take breaks and stuff but how do you stay like you know like a, obviously like a basketball player can keep shooting do you just hit tracks and and yeah it's it's tough because you so with f1 there's a limited amount of testing because again going back to like the bigger bigger budget teams if there was no limit they could be testing every day and Mm. increase their advantage to the smaller teams so f1 uh basically apply like a rule where you can only have x amount of days a year so if if i wanted to drive 100 days next year it's not possible unless it's in a different car or a different formula or something like that so um yeah it's i mean there's simulators the stuff like that but you can stay sharp even like I mean, you said uh, you joked about me being a go-kart driver, but it's yeah, yeah. like actually go-karting is, is a way to, to stay quite sharp as well. So there's things you can do, but nothing's like driving F1. No. Like it just, even for your body, like the G-forces, all the stress you go through, like it's even over Christmas. So we, the season normally finishes like November, December, and then we don't drive again till like February. Oh. So even two months not driving F1, not putting your body through that, mm. like the first day driving again is... Yes. Brutal, hell yeah. it's yeah. like you you're so stiff it's it's what do pretty you gnarly feel what does that feel like um it's so you feel a lot of it on your neck and like your back oh. um so it's just so we go through like five say around five g's so that's five times your body weight that's like the force that goes through Jesus. us through corners so that it kind of just it's like a shock to the body like you just obviously muscular wise you're like super sore and tight but you kind of, yeah, you just feel like you've been in some form of brawl, I guess. Right about now, seasonal excitement or dread is really starting to settle in, especially for small businesses. Stamps.com is your one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS or UPS services you need to run your business right from your computer. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. What could be better? Is there anything worse than going to the post office? What a waste of time. With Stamps.com, you don't have to do that. We've been using it for years just to avoid the post office, and it's been so fantastic. Use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer, and if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. Rates are constantly changing. With Stamps.com's switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know you're getting the best deal every time. This holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights and get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash mom for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash mom. And that's probably why you have to be in a in good shape, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have the your core probably very strong. Yeah. Now, how do you handle? Because Tom and I travel for work, and it's brutal just to stand and tell jokes. No, we're not doing that. We're not tricking. I promise. Um, it's brutal just to travel, sleep in a hotel, eat that food, and then just stand up and tell jokes. So you're traveling and then having to perform at like peak physical level. How do you? mitigate the damage of travel pussy you got to get a lot oh, of pussy oh that's what we were talking yeah. about earlier it's it's so much sleep. better for you sleep and sleep but <laughs> and first sleep. oh it's, it goes hand in hand if it? you had to pick another <laughs> driver to double team a chick with would you Ooh, go with like schumacher you know uh lewis hamilton oh. um uh verstappen like who would you be like this guy not the germans they're no fun well you'd uh, the Italians, obviously. Uh, well, you don't you don't want to be like outshone, do you? So no, that's right. You got to pick wisely. Probably a kid, one of the kids, <laughs> Leclerc. Go, <laughs> You're yeah. like, hey, you Let's Frenchy. go less experienced. Yeah, yeah. There you go. yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, one of the new one of the rookies. Come here, rook. Come here, rook. Let me show you how to do this. You go up front. I'll stay back oh here. My God. <laughs> God. This is great. I'm literally God. getting a free comedy show. I love this. 
<laughs> this is so good. <laughs> hey, but do you fly in like days earlier? Like, let's say you're doing Asia. He's, that's what he's here for now. There's no way he's, he's you can fly now. in day before and do no. Tokyo or whatever. So how many days? So we, well, it's tough because sometimes we have like back-to-back -back weekends. So Fuck. Russia got canceled this year because of everything going on. Obvi. But we were meant to go Russia, Singapore, Japan, Singapore, right, all right. in three weeks. And then all those time zones are different because in Singapore, we operate on European time because it's a night race. But then we go to Japan, which is then day. So that's, I think, seven hours time. Jeez. So it's so we're literally like we would have done, I don't know, the time zones, but in three weeks. So like sometimes you just have to suck it up. And I think the... I don't ever think we're actually op operating on like optimum performance. Yeah, of course not. Um, do you guys ever? Yeah. Do you guys have Jesus. preferences for the races that take place on a circuit versus city streets? Like, is is that generally is it you like is it unanimous amongst drivers? Like, we prefer this the over circuit. that. From from a from like a driving experience, street circuits are phenomenal because really? they're they're a bit tighter. There's walls. There's less like runoff or grass or gravel. It's like the it's it's those, more intense. Those are the ones I think as a spectator that you go. It is so crazy that they're not all crashing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And even I, I, I'm like, dude, how have I not crashed yet? Yeah. So It's uh, it's pretty wild. So that's from an experience. Is you just the rush is like no other on a street circuit. But then for racing, like for going side by side and being able to overtake circuit normal circuits because they're a bit wider, a bit more open. So they normally provide a bit more opportunity to overtake and have a better race. Oh, Do you guys have a go, question? Go ahead. Go for it. You also have beautiful teeth. Thank you. They're very white. Thank yeah. you. It's a secret of my lipstick. It's because I, the color, I sell this Christina P perfect red. Hell yeah. Makes your teeth look white. Thank you. Enchante. Thank you. Now. I'll get you some <clears> lipstick. Yeah, you need it. It's good. Okay. Show me your teeth, okay. Tom. Oh, your mm. teeth are good as well. But they're not teeth. like white. I mean, they're not yes. tens, but do you they're good. Right. Your, do you whiten your teeth? You must. You have a I, mega I've done white it a smile. couple of times, but it stinks so it bad. It does. Like, I know. Like the, um, like, what do you say? Like teeth freeze or what yeah. do you call it? Anyway, well, it just makes pain. me shiver. So I, I haven't done it for How old shit, are you? probably four years. He's a young guy. What are you, uh, 33. Oh, God. That's practically Dude, in F1, age. he's fucking 75. Yeah. That's crazy. Those yeah. guys are I got my frame, nice. my walking frame out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have a very important Go question. For it. Okay. Now, I, this is just a professional. What do you What were you saying before, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. You're in a foreign country. You're you've eaten many tacos the night oh. before the race. Mm. You're in your Gee, car. What country would that be? <laughs> Whatever. I'm just using yeah. the example I've done because okay. I've one time in Atlanta airport, I made the mistake of eating two tacos and then getting on a flight to Africa. Bad idea. Mm. Bad idea. What do you do when you got to go number two and you're driving Formula One? It's happened. Clench and pray. Yeah. 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 But what if what if it's I, diarrhea? It's it number one. Do you guys just I, go in your suit? Yeah. Do you go in the suit? So, Hell all right, yeah. let's answer the two question. Sure, sure, sure. I fortunately haven't ever had, call it a tummy bug. Yeah. <laughs> that's wanted to Travel. do anything like that. I'm also very cautious that that would be the worst thing to ever happen. Oh so I'm like, especially the night before the race, well, the whole race weekend, I'm eating fairly safe. Like I'm okay. not experimenting too much. But you're traveling food. too. Yeah. So it's hard. Do and you, you also like want to like soak load, in. Like before, like you get. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't say crazy. Like no. I, we're not like a, imagine like a triathlete or something. Sure. Like we're, I would say it's a balanced, it's okay. a balanced meal. Second Hold sorry. on, he's still answering no, the I'm question. Sorry, I'm no, I'm so cool. excited. Go, okay, go, there's go. more things. Go, go, you good. No, no, no. So, 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 so you eat, you eat well. I love your writing notes. Yeah, I just don't want to forget. So you eat, sorry. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I'm right. I just okay. got excited. And go then, ahead. Wait. No, no, you're good. So remember, I remember would hate to one. know how that would, I, I mean, I think if you were really going to go number two, like you'd have to pull in. You have to. Like really? you couldn't, yeah. You wouldn't also the G, like your... the forces on your body, it oh. would be so uncomfortable. I don't think you'd yeah. be able to continue. Can you pee while driving that fast? So Hold on, I've have you heard been, you have can. You, I've you've never, never done it? No, because I also like, you need to relax a little, right? I just yeah. don't know if I could relax driving yeah, that fast. True. You're going that fast. Yeah. Can and you... the belts are super tight uh -huh. because we like, you obviously want to keep yourself so in. Are, are you guys, do you stay conscious of the last time you took in fluid when you, when you race? Yeah. So you like, do. it'll be like the last thing we do really like pretty much before jumping in the car. 
we'll go and have a pee and then yeah. know that that should hopefully get us through the next hour and a half. Yeah. But hour also because then we sweat, we dehydrate. So then the urge kind of goes as well. So part two of my question, the, the morning of the race or the day of, mm. what's your routine? So this is hectic. So that's why I, I wanted you to come uh, or you'll have to come oh. to a race because it's, if you see the schedule, it is so gnarly. Like it's even my friends that know I've been doing it my whole life. When they come to a race, they're just like, dude, I, have, I haven't seen you all day. Like your schedule is nuts. So we'll have, so say the race is at 2 p.m. Uh, we'll get to the track probably like 8.30. Um, we'll have like an engineering meeting. So that's like talking about the race and set up and stuff like that. Then we'll have a strategy meeting to go through potential strategy, what tires, all this. Then we'll do probably like some sponsor meet and greets. Oh, um, all we'll this do, before yeah, the race? Yeah. You must be exhausted. Yeah, it's nuts. That's and the then worst. We'll, So there'll be like all this stuff going on. So our whole, up until probably 45 minutes before the race, I'll get some alone time. But uh, until then, it's it's. Uh, and then it's do nothing. you want to be alone for that? Yeah, because yeah. that's when I'll go through like a bit of a stretching routine and start warming up and, and then kind of Playlist? switching focus. You do music, yeah, yeah, music. Um, so I'll start it kind of like slow and steady just to not like get too G'd up too early. Um, but then by the time I'm on the grid, like getting ready to go in the car, it's like I'm fucking everyone up. Yeah. Nice. It's yeah, pretty yeah. gnarly. And when yeah, do you like take it. your yeah. shit in the morning? <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, do you guys do you have- the morning? Do you um, have- I just, whenever I got to go. Yeah. But I would think he'd clean out his body before the weigh-in, before the, you know, and that's why I'm asking about the routine. Like I take a shit before performance. You don't want to shit at the club. I mean, but if you- if you got to go, you got to go, right? Yeah, just okay. Well, I'm, it's important. You don't want to be dancing to when okay. you've got. Do you guys have a name? Is there like a a, a a a name you give to drivers who bought the team? But I'm sorry, to drivers whose dads bought a team. Oh my god, versus the worst. got their way there. Like you, like do you guys call them something? <laughs> they're the worst. I hate that guy. I know you're talking well, that about that guy. There's multiple guys. They're such pussies. <laughs> There's multiple guys. I know. You guys are so ruthless. I love it. <laughs> do you, it's like you're just so funny. Do you have a thing you guys call them? Um, no, do I you, don't. Do you go? Oh, who do you yeah, get? So yeah, maybe your friends call. Yeah, what do your yeah. friends call them? Not wait, even your friends. Those meanies. What are they called? I don't know. You must have it. You like, guys. Like. <laughs> you go. I'm trying to shave down this time. I hope Daddy lets me. Like that. Yeah. Oh, Daddy. I don't know. Daddy. Come change my but diaper. You, I mean, I'll say, look, there's, I'm trying to like be respectful as well. There's, it, it is a, like to get into the sport and not even F1, like just even to go go-karting as a kid. Like, yeah, you, you know, you need to spend thousands as opposed to hundreds if you're playing football, you know, a pair of boots and that's it pretty much. So um, you, you do, certainly need some kind of funding, whether it's from family or sure. sponsors. If the family's done it all, then like, yeah, sometimes people might be like, uh, that kid, whatever. But at the end of the day, also, if you're driving, once you get to like F2, F1, like- You have to have even, the even if, yeah, like someone's yes. paid your way there, yeah. like you're still putting your body on the line and all that. So like, there's certainly at that level, there's still an element of respect for sure. Cause yeah. it's like, not everyone can do it. Like, yeah, maybe their path was easier than others. But they're still pretty gnarly. Yeah, that, I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing I get to is that if you if you are on the grid with like the other F one drivers, you're not like an okay driver. Like mm -hmm. if you made it right, like even if your dad bought the team, it's like you're you know you wouldn't be able to hang if you don't have. Yeah, that's true. And and they and and again, like if if you're as I said, like a second in our sport is so much. Like if you were just constantly a second off or two seconds off, like whatever, then like. It stands it's, out, yeah. Yeah, sponsors would pull out. Like, so you, you need to be at a certain level. Like, as you say, you need to hang. Otherwise, yeah. at some point, it's going to Dude, you just watch, gonna man. Last. I'm going to lose 45 pounds and come <laughs> fuck you guys up. Bro. Dude, just watch. Yeah. Just watch. I need, I need like, a professional <laughs> shit talker on the grid oh. just to, like, help me out a little. Dude, yeah. Pipe me into the fucking... If you don't lose the 45 pounds, yeah. I'm still going to employ you. <laughs> okay. Just to, just to help me out. Oh I think you can probably... So I think we should just start that now. Yeah. Yeah. That um, 45 is a lot. That's a, that's a rough go from uh, here. Well, yeah. 45. How old are you? I'm 43. <laughs> I'm only 10 years older than you. What? Oh, really? Yes. I know I look You're older beautiful. than beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. 79? 79. Yes. I'm going to guess your month, March. 
Close. Close. Uh, what month? Give me the month. April. Fourth. No. Fuck. That's right. Wow. I was just trying Is to be cool. Is this your talent? No, it's clearly not. <laughs> and can I guess yours? I really haven't looked it up. I don't know. All right. September? No. Okay. Uh, Are you summer? July. Baby? July. Oh. Summer. We got this. Okay. July 17th. 17th. I was going to say 17th. Oh, that's yeah. really cute. No. <laughs> This is the stupidest it's got, game It's got ever a one in it. it. It's got a one in it. Oh, it does? Yeah. Uh, is it 11th? No. Is Once. it 10th? There you go. Boom. Boom. There you oh, go, baby. It? What is it? The first. first. Dang. Three days before. Month. Hit me. <laughs> like, okay. I'm going to give this one last crack. <laughs> My month? Can you Hell guess? Yeah. Here, I'm going to say, no, hold me the, on. I'm going to tell the you month telepathically. Give me the month and I'll the day. Hold on, I'm going to tell you telepathically. Did you get it? Did you just poo? <laughs> <laughs> formula one. Um, I just made a formula. What comes to mind? December. No. Mm. It, was right, it was right before your right month. Right before June. June the 10th. I, it's got a one in it. 19th. One less. No, nah, fuck that. Close. 18th. 18th. Yeah, yeah. no, nah, it's not good enough. Yeah. I failed. We're so psychic. It's crazy. <laughs> Perth. What does give me what? an Aussie accent before I go? Just humor Good me. Good night, Oh, he's the captain of accents. I did a bogan. Hello, con. <laughs> oh, do you have ketchup flavored chips, mate? Yeah, the mate, ketchup. we do. I do like that. Yeah, mate. They didn't believe oh, me. Oh, chopper. I remember chopper. 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 Chopper Reed. Chopper. Then. Chopper dies like as pubes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chopper. I love chopper. That. Eric Banner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was fucking rad. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you ever get the know. show Full Frontal? Like what he kind of, I think it's what he started on. It was like a- He's a chatty cunt. He's a what? Sorry. <laughs> chatty? Did you say chatty? Yeah, yes, a chatty, chatty cunt. Say, yes, that's yeah, what I said. chatty cunt. Yes. It's so funny with that word. So I love that this is very open for swearing. I'm still yeah. trying to be oh, yeah. somewhat okay. Uh, but um, so like I try to tell people that I'll just say the C word. Um, you can say it for me. And I'll say cunt. That's right. But um, yeah, that's not if bad. you say, if you call someone mate- so it's like if you're at a bar and I'm not a fighter, but anyway, I'm just like, these are situations that would arise maybe in Australia. It's like you're at a bar and you're like about to fight someone. You'd call them mate. Yeah. Like you want to go, on, mate. mate. Yeah. Oh, but if but you're at a bar and it's your mate, uh, you'll be like, hey, hey Cunt, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like so. Yes. Dude, the cunt's a mate and the mate's a cunt. This is the fucking best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Yes. Please tell us. Oh, I, apropos this discussion, so I was in London with an ex-boyfriend, and Ew. yeah, I know, gross, right? What a drone fest! Any hoodles? Like I'm an Anglophile. I lived there for a year, and I also visited Buckingham Palace. But that's neither here nor there. Gotcha. Here. Anyway, I was telling him how over there you can call people cunts, like hey, you fucking cunt, and, it, and you can also call your mate. A cunt. Endearing. You Endearing. Know? Endearing. A cunt is not yeah, yeah. bad. It's, 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 it's the so, way, I think if you emphasize the T at the end, that's yeah. less endearing. But right, if you kind right. of just make it hey, smooth, it's kind of cuter. Yeah. yeah. So I was telling him this, like, hey, you fucking cunts. And there's my cunt. That. Anyway, so we meet a bunch of um, strangers at the pub and we're just having a pint. And then we're like LOLing, telling jokes. And he's Good like. Good cunts. Yeah, and then he's like, hey, you fucking cunts. Like, he doesn't know them well enough. And he's like, hey, look, it's a bunch of cunts. And I'm like, no, you can't just say that. You left out the biggest what? detail. What did he say? He called a woman. A, he's like, hey, oh, you cunt. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah that's, and she was like, excuse yeah, me? Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> and he's like, I thought we were friends. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Even, even if I got female friends, I, ain't, yeah. I, I can't just can't. Them. That's yeah, aggressive no, as shit. Yeah, it's, it's too much. She was like, oh, Meet too my much. lovely cunt. <laughs> no. It's, it's, That's right. It's not good. Yeah, she's a real sweet cunt. <laughs> Do you, did dude? You, you and I are going to double team so many chicks. No, <laughs> when we babe, find, babe, we're going to find a babe. motor mouth in Monza next time. At Monza, excuse me. It's going to be rad, babe. But I'm getting them oh. ready for the 24 season. Yeah. Do you watch you Neighbors? Is Neighbors still on? I or do they cancel that? Stop it. Is that show's been on forever. I mean, it def. Uh, I haven't lived in Australia for like fifteen years. Oh, so, I didn't. But realize. I know, like, I definitely know the show, and maybe it. Where do you live? Uh, maybe it stopped. Oh, that'd I be big. There's like neighbors and home and away. They're like <laughs> they're the two big ones. Have you seen this, by um, the way? I want to show you. This is Australia. You can look at the screen right here. All right. Listen, brother, you don't fuck on the bus, mate. <laughs> I don't even care if you're fucking homeless. Don't fuck on the bus, cunt. <laughs> 
I don't care if you've got autism. That doesn't mean fuck on the bus. Get the fuck off and go fuck in the park or something. You fucking chat. Have some fucking respect chat. for yourself, you fucking chatty cunts. <laughs> Uh, Back home, I buddy. I haven't seen yeah. that. You miss home? Next, you miss home? I think that was. Blake, was that you? <laughs> Wait, that's what's hilarious. Chat? What's what a chat? What's a chat? Yeah, a chat. Is chat. it chats? You fucking chat. Yeah, I, don't, I actually don't know what that is. Chat. Um, you fuck chat. Chat. Yeah. I got every other word. You fucking chat. Chat. Not sure. I don't know. Hmm. I don't care if you're fucking homeless. Don't fuck on the bus, cunt. Yeah. <laughs> See, I that's mean, a hard, all, that's all a hard point. Yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah. Don't like, fuck on the bus, you cunt. Well, look, exclamation mark. <laughs> I know you got to get going. So just, we never played our opening clip. So we're going to play our opening <laughs> clip oh, um, yes. for you. And then we'll play the show open and then we'll take a break. But first, but let us thank you for coming by. Yes, thank, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. It was really treat. fun. I just came for a cuddle. I know, Aww. bud. You're going to, we're going to hug here in a moment. Jesus. It's beautiful. <laughs> Um, thanks. This is beautiful. I love what you've done with the place. Good for thanks, you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. You guys are beautiful. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You are too. Look so at that smile. Wow. Jesus Christ. Will you get married? No. Uh, one day. Yeah. When, like yeah. At 50. Yeah. When you're like fucking How 80. old were you when you got married? Oh. I'll ask Tom. It's rude to he ask a, a lady your age. No, I was 32 and he yeah. was only 28. Nine, nine, nine or 30. 29 or 30. I know. Yeah. Cougar. I'm an older cunt. Oh yeah! Well done. Thanks, well buddy. done. Yeah. Good for you. She's old as fuck. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still yeah. like this here. But what I do believe is that unless you make wealth, you have fewer choices. I have a lot of choices, more than most people in this room, almost everybody in this room, because I've created wealth. <laughs> you are making the mistake. You're trying to make a difference first, because that's politically correct. I believe with all my heart, and I just told Brian, this is an announcement, an exclusive, <laughs> that political correctness is a manifestation of lack of fucking self-esteem. Because you're all cunts. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother yes. to this. Your mom in the fucking stand! Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your podcast <laughs> with Tom Segura. We'll be back Did in a little bit. It? Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you crush Thank it. Thank you, bro. At, uh, Coda. Thank you. Yeah, dog. This is real. I know. <laughs> and we are back, and we are so happy to welcome back to the program the one and only <gasps> Kevin Nealon. Oh. And happy to announce right now you can get I Exaggerate My Brushes with Fame, Kevin's new book that highlights your absolutely extraordinary ability as an artist your paintings are seriously <laughs> man you, it, uh, you blow, the first time i saw this i was like that's not the kevin i know doesn't have this ability and then <laughs> i hear that a lot that's not the kevin i know <laughs> yeah i mean what dude it's so beautiful dude, like tom petty you're, yeah dude, it's ridiculous this. well i tell stories about each person i painted oh, like yeah. my interaction with them uh -huh. or most of them and if i if i, I if I didn't meet them ever, like Freddie Mercury, I will just muse about being in garage bands or going to concerts. Did you paint him pre-AIDS or like that, when you, uh, which, which era of him? As a child, actually. Oh, as really? As a child, yeah. Oh, he didn't have AIDS then. It was just teeth. He had a lot yeah, of teeth back then. He had big teeth. Yeah, he had about, a, uh, okay. a walker for the teeth. That was so rude. What about Bourdain? He was one of my favorites. Anthony Bourdain is in there. I did not know him, yeah. but uh, I found him very interesting, the life he had. Me it too. seemed like he should be perfectly happy, but he wasn't. I know. Much like that. Tom. Did I you? know. <laughs> much like Tom. Can I tell you, though, is that you guys, I, I, I don't know if people know this, how talented you are, but I always see on your Instagram. <laughs> I've only been doing stand-up for like 40 years. 
years. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I was like, nobody has no, I know, I kid. And, and and so on your Instagram, and I fell in love with a portrait you did of Howard Stern. And yeah. then you so graciously one day it just showed up in the mail. Awesome. And I I treasure it so really? much, and oh. I have to thank you for it because I have it in my office in our home, and I look at it every day, and I find something new in it every single wow. time I look. You're so talented and whimsical, and you really I think bring out the best in people. You see the best. I bring out the worst in people. Actually, yeah. I exaggerate their features. Yeah. That, but um, but thank you for that. I'm, I was really flattered when you told me that, and um, because back then a lot of people hadn't seen my work, and when they started seeing it, and then you uh, were so nice to uh, compliment me. Not so much Tom, oh but uh, excuse you. me. Tom excuse doesn't me. get them out. I I, I was extreme. I was stingy very with complimentary. cuddling and compliments. Yeah, because once you give them out, it's never enough. No. Yeah. It's they want more. Do you cuddle? Are you a cuddler? I I do cuddle. Mm -hmm. I have a mountain bike that I love, and <laughs> I'm on that thing all the time. I yeah. saddle up, <laughs> but I am a I am a uh, I am a cuddler. You are. Do you know what happened last night to me in my dream? And this hasn't happened in a while. It was a dream where I was fighting somebody for a basketball. They mm. were holding on to it, mm. and I and I knew I mm. had to jerk it away from them, but I had to wait long enough with my hands on it when they would relax a little bit, and I jerked it away. And I woke up and I was holding my pillow. I jerked my pillow out from under my head. What? Is yeah, this real? This is real. I, I thought and you've had this dream before because you said it hasn't happened in no, a while. No, no, ha I, uh, I haven't had a, a realistic dream like that where oh. it segued into real life. Whoa. Okay. But this one, uh, and then I took the pillow and I just dribbled it to the bathroom, went to bed. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding about that part, but the other part is true. I wonder what the dream interpretation what? would be of that, which I always I, You know what, Tom? I don't think um, there's anything to interpretation. Oh, bullshit. Did you never Bullshit. you ever therapy? You ever did psychotherapy? I've done therapy, um, but I've never, I never fell asleep during therapy, so I never had to mm. analyze that dream, you know. But uh, um, stealing ball. I think it's good for people though if they believe in that, yeah. just like religions, whatever gets yeah. them through. Whatever gets you through. I think stuff. it's fun to also analyze dreams. That's what I'm saying. Did. Yeah, so it's fun. fun. I don't, I don't yeah, think yeah. there's anything to it. But. I mean, I think that there's people that are good at the dream analysis. That's what I'm saying. Not, yeah, I, mean, I'm, I can't fucking it. do it. It's the same with psychics. Oh, yeah. I think they're really entertaining because if you sit down with somebody and they talk about you for a half hour, that's kind of nice. It is nice. Yeah, but the psychic thing, I mean, that it, you know, Good that's just that. somebody basically entertaining you. But dream analysis is some, like, usually if it's a trained person, they're, they're trained to, you know, analyze the subconscious and, and how we're, our brain is doing something when we dream. So a lot of times the interpretations are pretty fascinating. Yeah, 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 I now, suppose. Kevin, if you were to draw my husband, I assume you would start with these big old meanies here, right? Because they, yeah, like those mean, nasty things. You're talking about the eyebrows? Uh-huh, and then how the nose kind of, as he ages, cranks down even further and further and further. And then, of course, the scowl, the down-facing lips. And then don't forget the dark under-eye bags. Let's not do the body, okay? Oh, Let's just stick no. to the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need. I need somebody to point out the features. Yeah. Although sometimes it's easy. I, I live in a nightmare now since I started doing this because I'll be Bad. walking down the street with pedestrians passing me and I'm looking at everyone like I'm in a fun house. Oh, they have big <laughs> no They've already exaggerated them. You know, they, yeah. they look so like deformed and it's scary. <laughs> have you have people that you have painted? Obviously, you know, some of these people. Have you had people go like, oh, I love this. Like, I love what you did. <laughs> That one? <laughs> yes. Uh, originally, I didn't because I wasn't showing people. I just put them on my my um, Instagram. And I never heard from anybody. Mm -hmm. But then I did one of Rami Malek. Oh, yes. he's great. And Jimmy Kimmel loves my uh, sketches too. So Rami Malek was a guest on his show. And he showed him my uh -huh. caricature of him. And <laughs> on Jimmy Kimmel? On Jimmy Kimmel. He held it to the camera. And I'm like, oh, no because I don't know what these people are gonna think. And he looked at it and he said, Kevin Nealon is no longer my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but I really never was to begin with, so. But what a great face Rami has. He's got a great face, those eyes and uh -huh. the squareness of it all. So is that you, what you see? When, uh -huh. So you're looking at the face, what's the first thing you're gonna I look at? I see the eyes, I see the jaw, I see the squareness, like I said, his top of his head. Yeah. Uh, and then the eyes are really interesting. I'm Add Kevin Nealon to your search. Sure, what? Um, Maybe Ke Kevin Nealon since he painted it. <laughs> he, he wrote Rami <laughs> Malik charcuterie. <laughs> You're looking it up on uh, Google. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Charcuterie. He thinks that's the word for caricature. Okay. 
Charcuterie. Yeah. Charcuterie. I mean. Uh, no, yeah, it was Kimmel, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, can take you know what? I guess they didn't really make a big deal about it. So no, it's they not did. up there. I've seen it. I've seen the clip. Oh, you have seen the clip? Yes, I have. God yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, uh, we'll find it later tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, my oh, that God. was quick. Yeah. Let's see how and, this um, fucking goes. Oh, oh, no, no, no that's good. Take Ooh, Daniel that. Craig and him. Oh, Daniel Craig. Not, I like big. Daniel Craig. Did yeah. you done his face? Not yet. No. His face is already kind of caricature. It is. I've yeah. seen caricatures of him, and he's there got a very go. small chin. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. That's rad. Yes. Definitely. You nailed it, though. Nailed I like it. drawing the hands, though, too, holding up a picture. Yeah, <laughs> that was my favorite part. That looked so realistic. Yes. They're his hands. Yes, and yes. he has really big hands. I don't know if you know that. I did not know that. He does. He has huge hands. What is this art form? It's so funny. Like, where? What is the origin of this? Of taking someone's worst features and then it comes from a little tribe and <laughs> and the um, deepness of Australia. Yeah. But it, I mean, is this know, like it, a fair goes, art? Like, where did who's the first guy to be like, you know what, you probably, got a big nose? Probably Fuck Da Vinci. You. <laughs> All these abstract artists from a long time ago. I'll tell you what, I was studying impressionists for a while. And I would go to the museum in France, the Louvre and all that. And I read up on Monet and Monet used to do caricatures. Mm. Did he really? Yeah, he would do caricatures. Back then it was a lot of political stuff or commentary, but it was interesting to see um, how he did that. So I've always loved character artists. When I was a kid, I went into, I lived in Germany for a while. My father worked for a helicopter company and we were on military bases a lot. And I would go into the commissary and one day I pull it go to for a napkin and somebody had drawn on the napkin a picture of of uh, like a private like you know with a hat on and a big nose and a chin I thought that is so cool and I pretended drawing I practiced drawing that for a long time and um, and then from that my parents had two frame uh, caricatures of themselves over the uh, bureau in my bedroom so when I laid down at night I would subconsciously look at that and stare at it and see what yeah. the guy did you know it was a great caricature artist that did it and then I just started doodling all my life. Table reads at SNL. I would sketch the person across from me, whether it was Farley or Dana, whoever. And um, and I, I, you know, sketch people on airplanes sleeping with their mouth open. Usually, <laughs> yeah. I right. never show it to them. That's and then about funny. two, three years ago, I saw this guy was giving lessons in England uh, on caricatures. It was fifty euros a lesson, which did not cover my flights there every week, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so you know, I zoomed with yeah. him, and he kind of taught me some of the basics about it. And you you had a pretty good baseline though for it. Yeah, already. I did. I yeah. did. Yeah, but I see these guys on Instagram, and they're amazing, and I want to be like that. But also, like stand up, you want to develop your own style. Sure, you want to yeah. come up with your own uh, thing. So it's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. And when I was done with this book, I needed a break. Yeah. Because I was right. doing it nonstop. When, when you sit down to, to, to first sketch or, you know, a paint, something like this, how long is a typical session? Like if you're going to do something? It depends. It's gotten less and less. As, but I, for my, my own um, caricature, it took me like three weeks because I kept doing it and then throwing it away and yeah. doing it because I, it's hard for me to, um, you know, to That was find such out. an aggressive lick that you <laughs> yeah. just gave your finger. <laughs> I really, I felt it. Did I you think know? You noticed. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So that's that's yeah. me right that's there. That's three weeks. That was probably, um, I, but I don't know how long it was. I would take it with me on the road, and in hotel rooms, I would do see. it. I would sketch it. Oh, that's and, so funny. Uh, you know, it just took a long time for each you one. You know what's so great about caricatures, and I think I think why I enjoy them so much because my my parents too had them. You know, you go to the fair, and they yeah, do, yeah. It's like you you look you're looking for the truth. And then when somebody else points it out, oh yeah, that that's your that's that's the truth right there. It's yeah. such a great thing. That Subconsciously, you're looking at somebody and you know that they have a big nose, of but it's just kind of that's the way they look, and it's not. You don't think it's a big nose because you're used to looking at them. Yeah. So this kind of captures that. And the other thing is, during the pandemic, we weren't going out to do stand up. We weren't getting laughs. I never took that much time off in my life. I'm sure no comic had. Yeah. And I found that by doing these caricatures and posting them on, on Instagram, it was nonverbal comedy mm -hmm. people would see it and they would laugh and yeah. they get a kick out of it and so i thought that was kind of like you know my filling my void so cool yeah, and so universal and and uh yeah that's true did you meet verbal did you know freddie mercury like back to that we were actually roommates wow. in college yeah we went to a community school i did not know that yeah community school in amsterdam wow we would get there by gondola 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. But wow. we had a, 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 a motor on it. Sure. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jeez. There was no motor. Just the gondola. Yeah. <laughs> and the gondola came from Venice, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you see what a BSer I am? That's no, why I'm in stand up. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Come on, man. Um, no, but you didn't have any, any interaction? On, I don't know. Any art with Freddie Mercury? Yeah, I don't know. I just saw him in concert, you in know, concert, on yeah. TV. How about Petty? Because he's in Tom the, Petty, I did. From the show? I did. Or? No. Interesting. I, we used to play basketball at Gary Shandling's every Sunday. Uh-huh. A real eclectic group. Sir Silverman would play. Um, you know, just so many different. David Duchovny would show up. Sarah, uh, um, what's his name? Sasha Baron Cohen would come. Who so just fun. started playing basketball? He would like start kicking the ball like a soccer ball. Say, no, 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 you got to dribble it. <laughs> and, but a bunch of people. And because Gary did the Larry Sanders show, yeah, he had a lot of friends from there, like oh, Warren Beatty yeah. and some sure. really interesting people. Ryan O'Neill showed up one day to play. Um, but Tom Petty arrives and he's not there to play basketball. He's there just to hang out. Sure. Cause he had fun with Gary on the show. <clears throat> and I'll never forget this. He's sitting on the bench by the court. It's half court. We play three and three. He's sitting on the bench and his legs are crossed. I don't know how many times he crossed his leg, like a, a, a woven rope, you know, like a twisted rope. <laughs> oh yeah. You like know? leg behind it the leg seemed, thing. Yeah. It seemed like it went down because he's so flexible and thin. And then I noticed that he was chain smoking. Oh. Chain smoking, not only chain smoking, but he had another one lit as a backup. Oh, so when this one was finished. Cool. So in that, uh, in that picture I drew of him, he's holding three cigarettes That's and so he's smoking funny. another one. Wow. Yeah. That's why he's so skinny. Yeah, he's so lucky. Was uh, was Gary a good ball player? None of us were good. No, but that's why fun. we liked playing. It was yeah. fun. It was a workout. Sometimes a ringer would come in. Someone like David Duchovny played in, I think, Duke or somewhere. And he great, played at Duke? Somewhere like that. Okay. No, it was a community school I went to with Freddie Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, he played somewhere, okay. and so did Greg Kinnear. So they were very minimalist. They, they really were efficient basketball players, where we're just running, you know, throwing the ball, yeah, shooting, yeah. grabbing, going. They would stay outside, dribble, 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 pass, or maybe yeah. just take a shot and always get it in. Yeah. But um, the pay- players that weren't that good would usually end up getting hurt. Sure. But it was great. It was great. We did that for many years, playing That's basketball. Cool. And then people loved Gary, so they would sit down afterwards and kind of, you know, try to get... Um, Try to get um, advice from him. Oh, really? On oh. their career. Yeah. Oh. Like, I even brought a script to Gary. because We were good friends, so he wanted to read this script I wrote for a sitcom. And he read it, and he gave me some notes. And after he died, he died from, a, um, I think, a embolism, a lung embolism. But after they died, about a week later, they were cleaning out his office, and my script was sitting on his desktop from, like, two Aww. years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, so we were good friends, and that's, that's how Tom Petty showed up. He was beloved, Gary Shantling. He was, right? yeah. He, he was really beloved. had that mentor role, him. I guess. He definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, I used to watch him on The Tonight Show, and he was just so smooth, and the way he crafted a joke. And I would go on, do corporate gigs sometimes, and I'd call him, because it was for whatever the company was, and I would say, hey, you got any jokes that I could do for the CEO? And he'd be on the phone forever with me. Aww. It's almost like we'd go from one topic. He wasn't moving enough from one topic to the next, like on a joke. Yeah. I'd say, okay, that's good. He goes, no, 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 no. We got, we got more in this one. I said, okay. <laughs> wow. How generous. Oh, yeah. That's, that sounds like the key to it is being a generous person and giving your time. Well, you a good person. it is one of the things, right? being generous. And you know what, Christine? Love yeah. is the other thing. Love. You think so? <laughs> He did tell me once how he... He was very spiritual, though, he no? Was very spiritual. I hear that he was kind he, of He like, loved the Buddhism. He yeah. wasn't a Buddhist, but he read a lot about that. And he had that little Buddha belly uh, guy in the corner of his room. The with incense. <laughs> the Buddha. That so the way we saw... The company played ball at Princeton. He played college. Oh, basketball. Princeton. Oh, that's yeah. right. Princeton. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. No, but he was. He was a spiritual bro. Uh, yeah, and he had an acting coach uh, called uh, named Roy London who was very popular in Hollywood for actors. And he said, and he was really good friends with him, and he went to his bedside as he was dying, and as he died. And Gary told me this. He said, as he was about to die, he goes, I know the answer. I found the answer. It's all about love. Aww. And then he died. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like he saw, you know, 
Whatever yeah. the drugs are making them see. <laughs> yes, yes. When I was on ketamine, I had the same thing <laughs> with my broken ankle. Uh, I, I swear to God. Yes. Yeah. I've had the same. Uh, I thought I was dying. So, yes. Uh, I've had it with tequila. I just yeah. love everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tequila is a good one. It is good, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It is. But I had a hangover once. I'll never do it again. Seriously? Yeah. I'll never touch it again. Did you puke? Oh, Will we touch times. other alcohol or no? Um, I drink wine once in a while, mm -hmm. a glass of wine, but I did my fair share. I was never an alcoholic. I spent a lot of time in rehab, but I was never an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I never spent time in rehab, but I did like to drink on the weekends. And the weekends originally started on Friday, moved up to Thursday. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, okay, we better, I'm, you know, I'm 59, I better slow down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was in my 30s, I think, early 40s when I did that. Uh -huh. Party? You would, would you party with the people at shows? Did you do that kind of thing? Yeah, sometimes I would go out if I was on the road. We got to a bar or something. Yeah. But um, I never was a huge partier. You know, I was never running around like Robin Williams or whatever sure. back then. Who the fuck would be like that? Yeah, that I got crazy. crazy. He was, I drew him in this, and he was one of the first comics I saw, and I almost made a beeline back to my car and drove home because <laughs> he was so good. You know, he'd walk through the crowd, and he'd pick things out of people's purses and make fun of them, and he had no mic, and he was like a street comic, so he moved. Yeah. <clears throat> And I remember seeing him at all the clubs. You know, always see him. And yeah. he had that Shakespeare hat on, like in that picture right there. Yeah. And he, I don't think he really knew my name. And whenever we saw each other, he would call me boss because he called everybody boss. And I called him Bubble, Bubble. And I was never so amazed at somebody with their talent than him. And I thought really? after he died, I thought there'd be a statue of him in every town. Yeah. Right? And I never saw him... That, you know, he, had, he always sounded like he was Scottish, the way he talked. Hey, Bubba, how are you doing? Mm. You know, yeah. Looking good, yeah. And I remember I was working at Cobbs in San Francisco once when I was in the marina. And he was there, and he came back really angry to the club. I said, what's the matter? He goes, damn, my car won't start. I said, well, I'll take a look at it. Maybe I can help. I didn't know anything about cars. I just wanted to go out and see if I could hang out with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. I know how to open the door and stuff. Sure, sure. <laughs> of the hood. So we get out there and it's a Range Rover and I've never seen him. Like outside of that character who was performing, he was, him, he was just angry. He was kicking the car and slamming the hood and just swearing up and down. And I thought, man, that's okay. I guess this guy's not some, you know, miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm comedian genius but he was a genius i thought but i think it's like with every comic i don't know when you started did you see a comic and go wow this guy's funny you went back to see him again and he's doing the same thing of course and it's like you're it's like finding out there's no santa claus yeah. yeah and but robin i think was one of those that didn't do that although i did learn after a while that he did have he did have a format that he followed no. And he did a lot of the same voices each time. Yeah. But it's a little different each time. I mean, that's the thing you f find out after you do stand up long enough is that like, that's why I, I, I always, I always resent the term when people are like, this guy's a genius. I'm always like, no, he's not actually. No. Like, and I, <laughs> and only because I feel like I've been around it long enough and I yeah. go, there are really proficient, like really incredibly proficient comedians. I have seen my absolute favorite comics have bad sets, which I think is good for you. It's good to see a comic you love have not a great set. Yeah. It makes him like a mortal. You go, oh, okay. I've seen them comics that I that everyone admires and celebrate do like gimmicky things, things that you would kind of go, oh, really? Which again, I think is good for you to see. And I also feel like um, none of them in comedy ever, like nobody in stand up ever makes me go, oh my God, this is, this is a, a level that none of us, I actually think it's all attainable. Like yeah. the, amongst the great comedians. I think in the beginning, like what Kevin's saying was when, he's, when you're young, before you know the ins and outs of the yeah, craft, for sure. you go, oh, what's that magic? That yes. person does magic. And then you learn to do some of the tricks. And you're yeah, like, the recalls. I know that yeah. trick. Yeah. <laughs> I know you. But I'm like you. I'll watch a comic and I'll think, this guy's really good or this girl's really good. Um, the, I like the attitude. I like the point of and view. The, yeah, for sure. Um, but... It's very attainable. It is attainable. But they're very good at what they do. Exactly. They're, you get, I get like more, I'm like this, you know, some comics really make me laugh and I enjoy and appreciate how funny they are for sure. Some of them are just brilliant at, at like their observations and their stand up is, is fantastic. What I'm saying is like when I hear people glorify somebody yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, it's not really, especially when you see, I don't know, 
for me, I guess maybe it's because we do comedy, but I'll see somebody in music and I'll be like, that's another level of genius. I but, think. but not comedy. Not really. I've, Even as I sit here, you can say that. Well, you especially, <laughs> of course. But I don't want to make I don't want to embarrass you. I have stuff. I don't know if you do this in your act. I have stuff that I'm really embarrassed about, mm -hmm. but I like doing it. Yeah. Like I have one one thing I do. It's the best. That I'm I'm, I'm so ashamed of, but I, <laughs> I but I do it anyway. Oh, you want to hear something really weird? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> That's the bit. That's. That's the best, though. That's, That's the, so fun. Do you want to hear something? Oh you, want to, oh, you want to hear something really weird? <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that is so actually the, silly. the silliness. Like when comedians yeah. embrace silliness, yeah, it so actually nice. makes me smile the most. You need to pepper a little silliness in with your um, your observations in life that are. Yeah. You know who I thought was very close to being a genius, only because of how he came up with things was uh, Andy Kaufman. He was a big influence on sure. me. Sure. Because he was different, he was unique. But of course he did a lot of those bits over and over again, but sure. to be able to come up with that, to come now, up with those. I'll tell you what I, when I say like for genius, uh, as far as Robin Williams for me, is that when, once I saw him as an actor, I was like, holy oh, yeah. shit. That, that, that to me left me with a bigger impression than even oh, as yeah. a comedian. I was thinking I was about like, that too. Fuck. I was thinking about too. I mean, great dramatic actor. That's too. what I'm saying. That I don't know. That in, it has a bigger impact in, uh, for me personally. I'm like, this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that a lot of comedians are good actors, dramatic actors. Yeah, Ooh, dramatic, yeah. definitely. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there is a, a real dark and sadness to them, and then oh, yeah. they can tap into it. You don't think you get funny from having a great life? Well, I had a great life. Did you? Yeah. And that's the sadness of it. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted some challenge in life. Yeah. You know? And yet I was handed yeah. everything. Yeah. Bummer. Well, you are really tall, and that's Damn. not fair. I am tall. I'll tall tell people privilege. that people will see him on stage and they'll, they'll think, hey, I didn't know he was that tall. Yeah. And I'll say, well, I didn't know you existed. Yeah. yeah. You know, so touche. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that? Um, can I show you this clip? Because we opened with it and we haven't really gotten a chance to explore it. So I want you to watch it with us. Okay. Um, there's two parts of it. Here's part one, okay? But what I do believe is that unless you make wealth, you have fewer choices. I have a lot of choices, more than most people in this room, almost everybody in this room, because I've created wealth. You are making the mistake. You're trying to make a difference first because that's politically correct. I believe with all my heart, and I just told Brian, this is an announcement, an exclusive, that political correctness is a manifestation of lack of fucking self-esteem. <laughs> because you're all cunts. <laughs> oh. yeah. Man, I can't tell you how often I've thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> we are on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> I like the beginning of what he said. You get a lot of choices when you have money. And that's the difference between having money and not. If you're a happy person. Options. Options. You yeah. have all these options. And eventually, um, you don't want to do any of that stuff. Yeah. Yes. So you give your money away. And that's the beauty of it all. Yeah. Oh. But I thought this guy had something to say. Well, there's more. No. Well, oh, there yeah. is. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit more. Let's hear it. I've been called a lot of things in my life, but I mean, a cunt's not one of them. Because you cunts all want everybody to love you. I don't want anybody to love me. I don't want anybody to even fucking like me. You think Donald Trump gives a shit what you think of him? You think Steve Jobs, when he was alive, gave a shit? You think Mark Zuckerberg gives a shit? Only you weak cunts give a shit. <laughs> there you go. How'd you get that tape? Oh, that's great. Dan Pena. Uh, we just... Um, I found this guy. Yeah. It, it's, it's, by the way, I think Trump does care what people think of him. I would, I would think so too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That to is a true. fault. That is amazing. He's a fragile man. So this is, a, is this a TED Talk? Uh, no, it's even better. It's oh. Dan Pena uh, at his uh, uh, private residence in, I believe, Scotland, um, oh. giving a, a business talk to Jeez. some cunts, <laughs> to some weak little cunts. <laughs> oh my gosh. My yeah. wife was telling me that she was looking at the top 400 or 500 in the Forbes list, uh -huh. or the top richest people in the world, yeah. 400 people. And it's mostly men. Yeah, a couple of women, but sure. mostly men, yeah. and that kind of made her angry. Why? Well, because women aren't getting the chance apparently to. I don't know. To make Can money I tell you what I think now? Because you, your wife sounds like a real broad with that analysis. I mean, yeah, you know, 
Yeah. The broads okay. on that list who have money. <laughs> the broads. They, uh, Hair, bulging they, eyes, they, yeah. yellow teeth. Don't forget Although, the teeth, Oh, the Kevin. teeth are important. There are a few broads on that list, and they they inherited or <laughs> divorced somebody, okay. and that's how they got okay. on that Okay, okay. <laughs> well, Kevin, I'll tell you, Christine, the broads. I'm so sorry it's what you horrible. have to go through. It's the worst. Can I tell you, as a broad, yeah. We, yeah. Both di- we both do the stand-up, and then children come into the picture. And this broad, I think it's hard. It's harder for the broads once they drop children to be like, I'm going to go full speed ahead on career. But it does give you more material. It does. No, it's actually made my career go much better. But I'm saying that the time away from my children in order to really go full tilt and earn a lot yeah. more money to put me on a right, Forbes sure. list, it's not worth it for me. Right. I have to. Otherwise, stay you would be on a Forbes list. I think. Maybe I don't know. Tell but them, I don't have the motivation to either because yeah, I true. like Who being cares? with my kids. Yeah, it's not about money. This guy's let yeah. him do Tom, it. Tom, you let's talk about you. Did you know you had kids? Yeah, because <laughs> I know you're never home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. Yes. Yes. And how do you like being a dad? It's great. Are you bringing up the kids now? Uh, <laughs> the screen. Anything we talk about, you bring up the screen. No, uh, we don't uh, show our no, kids. No, you don't. You don't. Never. No. Yeah, way. That's a weird choice. I think. What's that? That when like comedians with like you know public profiles oh, yeah. like, here's my kids I'm like, yeah I know. okay all right weirdo that's true Fucking that's true let every no, creeper in on the internet just look at your i kids. put my kid on all the time but i pixelate him out in the face yeah, exactly. just to tease those guys that sure. really want him <laughs> yeah so I, pixelate, pixelate, I pixelate just enough so they yeah. can't see mm. but yeah. one pixelation over eye another pixelation on the other eye mm-hmm. and then i use a couple of pixelations to do the teeth yeah and they don't yeah. know who he is they don't know yeah. who he is yeah, yeah. No. How old is your kid now? What would you say, Tom? I say mean, 15. 14, 15? Yeah, yeah 15. Yeah. Dang. She's a sophomore. That's wild. Yeah, let me show you a picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put it on the internet. Put I've it seen on the on picture. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You showed me. Yeah. It's handsome so cool. kid. He's had a lot of work done, but yeah, yeah. I like him. He's good. He's <laughs> nice. He's yeah. handsome. That's the age to have the work done, honestly. Get it done now before people go, what happened with the lips? Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know when I my facialist just told me she said that you have one good facelift in you, oh, so you have to left or one? lift one oh. good facelift in everyone. So you oh. have to choose your timing wisely. You don't want to get it too early. You don't want to do it in your forties because then you can't do it again and again. Just choose one good facelift. I think the era would probably be what late fifties, fifty five, yeah, fifty five, sixty. Well. I will tell you, I saw Kenny Rogers' face look. <laughs> he looks great. He looks amazing. Isn't he I mean, dead? But he did die. But I thought, <laughs> did he get it soon enough? Did he have enough years where it could? Oh, oh, no, I mean, get. <laughs> Fucked himself up so good. But you got to let it settle in. And I think once, <laughs> oh my God. once you get it done, you can't come out for like a couple of years. Yeah. Let it settle in and find its way. Looks like he did the teeth on the same trip. <laughs> Holy shit. Who's a goddamn Bill? He got the Steve Harveys. <laughs> God bless him, though. God bless him. He. Wait, know, what did he do though? But he did an. He did he too eye much. Lift, I think. He did it, yeah, too and much. And then what? Cheek implants. It looks it's like a fake teeth. beard. It's a fake beard. Can I tell you something too? Wow. As a, I mean, I don't know, dude or woman. <laughs> it, it's too old to do it. He did it too. too he late. waited too long. Yeah, because gotta, I think he had maybe five years of that. A five year late. run with that face. Yeah. <laughs> A but, five year yeah. run of spooking people the fuck out. <laughs> I gotta tell you that. I mean, because you never look younger when you do this kind of shit. You just look weirder. Well, Different. it's too aggressive. Different. You can look, you can look younger if you do it subtly. I you know? agree. You don't want to look at him much. with him and Dolly. <laughs> Holy shit! Looks like two wax figures. What's going on? <laughs> you don't want to do too much where your phone doesn't recognize you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bert, Bert told me that he. he fuck. He's been on like. Benders, where he's just drank it too much, and his phone doesn't open. When he, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, like, they won't recognize him. Like, no, <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> Type in your code, <laughs> and he can't remember his code. Uh, and there's no way. Man, look at that! He's got to call someone for the code, and you can't call anybody. Yeah. His eyes are too. He opened them up too much. Yeah. But what a talented guy, huh? Yes. Yeah. The, didn't he have a barbecue place too? Uh, Kenny sure. Rogers barbecue, barbecue and and all. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it must be hard for you, musician, because they can only make money on the road, I've been told. Touring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you got to look good. You got to look like you're pulled back on it's the road. It's scary. Uh. You have to be a rock star, especially because now as we're watching Madonna age and how do you navigate that, like, it's scary. It's got to be scary to be 
like a share, a Madonna. How do you anybody with age? one name? It's it's hard. It's so it's hard, hard having yeah. one name. Somebody else comes along with that same name. I know. Then you're screwed. You're so screwed. Yeah. When are you, are you gonna Oof. do? Do you think you're gonna do the Kenny Rogers? Well, I have <clears throat> I have that plan now with mm -hmm. my. Um, with my facialist mm -hmm. yeah. who isn't really qualified to do all the surgery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he has been outlining everything with a Sharpie. That's the way to do it. And it's the way to do it. And he wrote there, so then I make a mistake. He says, this face. This, yeah, yeah. On, this that, face. on my this head. Side. Right. You're, um, you're going to go like aggressive, like pull back everything, do. Do it all at once. Yeah. But do it like, all at once. you should do, are you, are you going to do the eyes? I'm going to pull eyes. the eyes back. So I have one on each side of my head. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have the best peripheral vision in the world. Yeah. And my nose, I'd like to bring up to my forehead. <gasps> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's oh, a good that's, idea. And have that's a very elitist down. style to go for. That's what, I, that's what I'm doing. Uh, the chin's coming off completely. <laughs> wow. I'm going to hang this lower lip with collagen. I'm getting the three plus pack of collagen. So right. that hangs down. So it doubles <laughs> as a chin and a lip. That's so good. And um, I'm actually going to take my ears and put them on my shoulders. <laughs> so that's my plan now. I don't know if I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Got a minute? Yeah. <laughs> Let's say an actress goes to a very famous Beverly Hills plastic surgeon mm -hmm. and he performs a lot of work on her. Really amazing work. And then, because he's an artist, right? Sure, they are. And then he goes off and dies. <gasps> Does that person who had the work done become more valuable because Oof. he has died as an artist? Wow. That's, really that's actually a point. very good question. And that's true. That happened. Really? Yeah. That happened. I don't remember the name of the doctor or it, but he was texting and driving and went off the road. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Did you buy her or something? How did her price come into? Yeah. Well, I didn't know she was for sale oh, until right. I saw the frame around her. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this one's for sale. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, no, I was just thinking about that because, I mean, it should, as as it happens in the art world, yeah. when the artist dies. And, and what a bummer, dude. too, for him to die because then who's going to do your touch-ups? That's true. But luckily she died not soon after that. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Apparently he botched something in her. And Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the first <laughs> time I got Botox, um, or was it filler? I think You talk filler. about this like you're losing your virginity. The first time I had sex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was filler. The first time I got oh, filler, filler, I was so afraid. And I asked the doctor right before she did, I go, what's the side effects? Like I have two little <laughs> children. She goes, well, okay. One woman in Beverly Hills went blind and no. she was a mother too. And I was no. like, <gasps> she's like, that's not going to happen to you today. And I was like, yeah, but it kind of can. It kind of can. She wanted her eyes filled in. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, it's a one in, you know, 1,000 thing. And I'm like, oh gosh. If you were going to fly in a plane, there's a one in 1,000 chance you would crash. Would you go? Yeah. How about one in 500? Yeah. How about one out of 10? No. <laughs> How about you? You love life. Uh, it would have to be at least one out of 10,000. For you to Ten, fly? For you to fly. Yeah. What about yeah. what it's cars? much greater are... odds than that, though. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. To oh, die no. in a plane crash? No, much greater. Like, in other words, oh, oh, like the it's, odds are... Oh, it's, yeah, you're, it's you're much more either. likely to survive. Yeah. So if you ever look in on... In a plane crash? No, no. I mean, your flying. number wouldn't be called up. Look at that. Uh, but... If one you, in 11 million. One in 11 million. But you look at, Shit. look at it. There's an app that shows you all the planes that are in the air. Look at the car though. Car the car is one in 5,000, 5, Kevin. That's why I don't drive. I do not drive. I always have somebody else drive. Yeah. <laughs> I picked you up today. You did pick me up. Yeah. And you brought my bags in. I did. What room am I in here tonight? Um, right. It's over. It's, it's <laughs> in 26. Nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you, there's an app that'll show you every plane that's in the sky mm -hmm. in that particular moment. And it's almost like, the whole country is red with flights. And I'm surprised they don't crash into each other. I know. I think about that all the time. I'm just amazed that people, that you get your, your, your postage delivered. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just surprised that like you get mail. How does yeah, that work? I the know. The scale how, of that. How does Amazon get you something like two hours later? How? Oh, how does tuna fish stay fresh in the pouch? <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a week because I wanted to eat tuna fish. And it's then airtight. I thought, how disgusting <clears throat> That they can keep fish contained in a in a pouch. What kind of stuff is in there keeping that alive? Well, they put it in there when it's alive to begin with. So it's got fish. a head start. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what do Tom? Do you check expiration dates on cans and things? Bread. I don't really either. Well, he no. barfs a lot more than I do. do but I, I mean, you know, sometimes I'll eat something a few months old and, you know, get sick. But, you know, that's, just, <laughs> that's what the body's defense mechanisms are for. And that tells you not to eat that same thing again. Yeah. And then I just go like, oh, don't have seconds of that. 
you know? Yeah. I'll be eating something out of a can. My wife will look at the expiration date. She goes, you know, this expired last year. <laughs> yeah. I said, I can't tell. Yeah. I just, if I see mold, I won't eat it. Sure. If I see mold, if I see like a bug or something <laughs> or, you know, some type of growth, if it smells like somebody farted into the thing that I'm eating, I'll be like, hmm. But other than that. Does that happen often? Yeah. You, know, like, you like that or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. That. No. Not at all. No, I'm not a big fart fan. My yeah. wife will buy like a bread, a loaf of bread from the farmer's market. It's fresh. It gets green on it like after two hours. Yeah. You know, mold. I will yeah. eat a piece of like Wonder Bread that's mm -hmm. been sitting on the counter for a month and it's still fresh. How is that possible? Well, preservatives. preservatives. You know what I saw on a video is that those mold spores spread throughout the item that you're eating. So just because you think you've picked oh, off the mold. Really? There's spores within That's okay. the bread and That's such. Okay. But You're what fine. happens if you eat mold? I don't Nothing. think anything that crazy. It's mushroom, yeah. isn't yeah. it? It's mushrooms. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's mushrooms, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's natural. <laughs> it's natural. Yeah. Portobello. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, Portobello. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Mold can produce toxic chemicals called well, mycotoxins. <laughs> they can cause diseases, even death, depending on the amount Whoops. consumed. Oh. Yeah. I guess that's not good. Do you ever um, stand in the sunlight? It's in, the sunlight's <laughs> streaming through the room, and you scratch your cheek or something. You see all these white flecks yeah, floating around. Yeah, it's sure. so creepy. What are we breathing in every day? Well, we're dying. Oh my god, we're dying every day. Yeah. No, but the dust. I know what you're talking about like just like sometimes you just see a beam of light, yeah. and it's just gross yeah. dust. Yeah, yeah. and that's we're us. just breathing that in. That's our bodies just decomposing <laughs> while we live. I might have to wear that mask from now on. But that's what your nose hairs are for. That's what. That's why they tell you not to breathe through your mouth. Oh, I had those all waxed out. All of them. Yeah, I oh, leave wow. one in the back just to do that, but <laughs> it's just too much work it's for one. It's too much work. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think if you were a single man, you would use social media to? Like Dating apps. Yeah, but I mean, like, just to <laughs> announce, like, what you, who you are, what you're looking for. Probably. Yeah, because there's there's a couple of guys that we found that are doing it, and they're fucking knocking it out of the park. Um, <laughs> like this guy here. Come on, now, beautiful. I'm looking for a plus size woman. Let's make it real. A real motherfucker. I'm down for mine. I'm all about mine. <laughs> Looking for love. Oh, he's a keeper. <laughs> hell, treated like gold, worship the ground you walk on. I'm your man. I mean, he's, that was like right to the point. Listen, great pitch. Why, why, <laughs> when your daughter grows up, is dating age, yeah. where is this guy going to be? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you do have a daughter, right? Two boys. Okay. But when you have your daughter. Yeah. And she grows <laughs> up. She's coming. She's coming. How old are your kids? Six and four. Know? Oh, yeah. Six and four. Yeah. Oh, that's a great age. So Adopt. One's adopted. But, yeah. One is adopted. The black one. Yeah. The black one. Yeah. Huh. And what's the other one? He's half Chinese. Oh, really? Yeah. But he's like, she's the other half. Oh, nice. So you, you did go to the house of plastic surgery, I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, on me. Yeah. 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 Good for you. Thank you. You guys have it made. I know. You do. I know. I it's mean, you could do a lot better, but at this point, you have it made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this true? That's true. It Are you true. happy, yeah. though? I am, yeah. Are yeah. you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. Tom, look at me. Are you happy? I'm happy. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Are you Tom happy? Tom is very, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Sure, sure. Tom is very, very composed. Yeah. I don't know him that well, but I like yeah. him. But he's like like me a lot, where he doesn't get overly excited about yeah, anything. Yeah, it's so true. And I get complaints about that, because my Same. wife is very enthusiastic about things and shows her feelings. And I'm yeah. like, I don't trust anything, I guess. I'm so used to being let down. I, huh, that's the same Tommy and I. I no, get, we're I'm very like, alike in that. I'm like, there have been times where I'm like, just get excited. It's so yeah. fucking crazy, yeah. dude. You just <laughs> sold an arena. You just did a book. You did it. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's very cool. I know, right? And it's so sad, because I want I want you to enjoy life the way Because he realizes underneath what he really is. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Just like me. Dead. We're dead inside. <laughs> dead. Yes. But yeah. you love, you like I would, inside? I would go. Well, I think the thrill <laughs> of life is really probably doing, like, I mean, I've, you know, I've joked about this, but I do think like following somebody around, following them home, following them to a park or a trail and like doing what is innately inside of all of us would probably give me the thrill that I'm That's looking the for. Thrill. Yeah. I think he's right. I, and and can I say something? The more you joke about it, the more I think you're 100% not lying. You're telling the truth. He watches that Dahmer show over, and over, and, over, over and, and over and over. He restarted the whole series. Just start from the beginning. Watch it again. Really? Yeah. Jeez. I can't yeah. stomach it. How about Making of a Murderer? Remember that one? Yeah. 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 Is that what excites you too? Death? 
Like, does it take a lot to excite you? Because I, I think that's what he's yeah, what trying to say. Yeah, what is the thing that, it's not so be much the death, it's the torture before the death. <laughs> that's yes. what I like. Yes, yes. You, you were on the same page. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if they were legal, if that was legal, which I assume it will be one day. Yeah. Um, boy, you'd see some smiles on our face. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've, I've never seen a full-blown smile from Tom. I've that, seen a little bit of... No. Fan, I have that fantasy of kidnapping someone, tying them up, torturing Tom. them. Like, you know, Tom. somebody who deserves Tom. it. Not like a bad, Tom. not a Tom. good person. Tom, you, don't... you are right up my street here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's funny when somebody See? goes, oh my yeah. God, are you kidding me? You don't know if they're going to be excited about something or really yeah. angry. That's true. You know, yeah. are you kidding me? I yeah. love that too. I love that too. Yes. No, I just as a disclaimer, I think that's sick. Yeah. That's really sick. <laughs> and anybody listening, don't. It doesn't. It's not me. Maybe it's Tom, but it's not me. No, no, no. no. I, I was doing a bit. I'm yeah. doing a bit. You're doing a bit. Now let's get yeah. it back to Tom for a second here. Yes. I was. I was telling somebody. I'm doing the um, the YMH. You got to tell me what that stands for, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm doing the YMH podcast and I know Tom and I, Tom loves cars. Yeah. It's Tom, right? Yeah. Tom loves cars. <laughs> yeah. And when people get a little success, they're like rappers in a way, but yeah. they'll go with cars if you're like a comedian or. Yeah. Because cars, you've always loved cars. Mm -hmm. You probably have two or three mm -hmm. like really high performance cars. Right? Other than less? Two. Yeah. Two more than two, so you got four cars that you really love, right? You were you you splurge a little bit. You got four cars, right? More. <laughs> you own a you own a um, you have a fleet of cars. Do you have a taxi company? Where were you going with this? <laughs> I was just gonna say it's nice to have a hobby. Yeah, but I will never collect anything. <laughs> so I can't. But Christine, this is you your, collect? But isn't this your hobby that you've? I'm now done with that now. You're done. Yeah, I'm You're so just gonna sick burn of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that is my hobbies. It is available though. Exaggerate yeah, is my actually, brushes with fame. <laughs> I exaggerate my brushes with fame. Yeah. And Tom, you know, we we got to do a hike, so I keep bothering you for a hike. But I know you're here now and you're busy. But I have that hiking show coming out October twenty <gasps> seventh, oh, fourth season. It's called Hiking with Kevin on YouTube. There's some great trails here in Austin. I've been on them along the river. Oh, along yeah, the I river, along yeah. creeks. I have a little app. I find them. I take the boys. They love it. I would take Tom to a trail, but I'm not sure I could trust them. I don't think you, you could. Trail. We did a night. We did a few walks together. We did. In LA. We did actually. That was really fun. And you they did. are walks, by the way. <laughs> They're yeah. not really hikes. <laughs> yeah, but you had one of my. You had one of the funniest things I'd seen that you did. <laughs> the walk which is that we would be walking and then, you know, there's a group walking towards us and he'd be like, oh, hey, we were just talking about you. And then we'd just keep walking. <laughs> That's so funny. And then we, we wouldn't stop right and just keep walking. Yeah. And they're like, That's so silly. How, how are they talking about yeah, us? Yeah. So but I had some good people on this year so far. I've, I've done 14. I've done over 100 hikes so far. I'm exhausted. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah. No I would so love fit. to go on the hike. Well, when you have time, we'll do it. Yeah. But Paul, how long are you here is, for? I'm here. Um, I'm leaving in a couple hours. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I texted you beforehand to see if you want to do one, but I was in Canada. You were in Canada. <laughs> Paul Rudd is the opening. Uh, Love uh, Paul Rudd. Hiker, yeah, and Eugene Levy did one. Lovely. Great Kinnear. So funny. Some so other funny. comics. A lot of yeah. heavy hitters. This is your Noah basketball Jones. team. It is. It is. Dang. Yeah. So um, that's October 27th on YouTube. Very um, nice. But that was that happened already. So I'm, you know, I like to let people know that that's the first episode if they can go back and watch it. I um, I might be able to do it next week in LA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm on this book tour. I don't know if I'll be there. Oh Jesus Christ! How are we gonna fucking walk? That? Plus, I had a knee replaced like two months ago. You did? So yeah. Jeez. We could just walk through like a mall or something. I told the plastic surgeon just do my nose. I know. And he goes down to the knee. We could do a mall. I asked Steve Martin if he would go on a hike. He goes, if we do Beverly Hills. I thought, okay, I'll just hold some bushes behind us, like we're out in the woods, <laughs> hiking. But the thing about those Did hikes- Did he do it with you? No. Those people never, they let down their guard when they're out on the trail. It's not like being in a studio. It's different, Like yeah. right here. Nature. I mean, I'm, I'm very guarded right here. Sure. But when you get out on a trail, there's no camera, and there's no like lights and audience. That's true. And people kind of forget, and that you get the endorphins going. And, and I remember passing people when I was hiking, you pick up bits of conversation as they're going by. I know. That's and the it's best so interesting. Part. Sometimes I'll follow those people to hear the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> I heard one guy passing, uh, passing uh, yeah. with his wife, and I felt so sad for him. As they were passing, I heard him say, 
Do you think I could golf tomorrow? Oh. Mm, that's who you We're want. We're going to divorce. Take it to the fucking cabin in the woods. <laughs> Jeez. No. Just split her uh, Christine, I'm just surprised you're alive still. I know, me too. Jeez. Can I you tell go you? to bed at night with your mm, eyes open? Yeah, I, I go to bed listening to him watch Dahmer or whatever murderous shit that he's into. Um, but anyway, I've been hiking here in uh, uh, Texas, and you know what I love is the animals. I'm actually going to, I put out a little video every now and then really? about what I see. Like just the like huge what? ass bumblebees, they're so big. Like spiders that are this big. You might, they might be birds. Oh, maybe they, they're the, birds. They're yellow and black birds, birds yes. here. Yeah. <laughs> and then armadillos everywhere. And oh, then vultures man. that eat the dead shit in the street. Yes, I love those. So fucking cool, man. So cute. Dude, I saw a dead snake on the road what the other day. What kind of snake? Just a tiny little something. I don't know. It's you gotta cool watch the little shit. ones. The little ones are the most ferocious I've learned. Is that really? right? Yeah, yeah. A little baby rattlesnake. They got a lot of adrenaline in them. They got a lot of Rattlers. poison. They don't know how to control it. Oh, oh right. right. And sometimes a rattlesnake will be laying in the trail in LA and it's big. And I don't know what to do to get, I don't want to jump over it because you might jump up because they could oh, jump. Yeah. Sure. And this woman passed me. I said, you know, there's a snake. The trail's closed. There's a snake right there. She goes, oh, no, no, I'll show you how to do it. No. They feel vibration. So you have to stomp your feet really hard on the ground near them, and then they slither away. Don't get too close. Right. And I have a friend who caught a rattlesnake. No. He's crazy. He will sneak up on them. There's a time of the year when they're a little more... Mm, passive? You know, passive. I think it's maybe summer. I'm not sure, but he go up to it, and it'll take... He'll get his thumb and forefinger and he'll no, both hands out. No. And then he'll grab the tail and the head at the same time. No. Pick it up. Yeah. No. Nope. friend's out of his fucking mind. Well, it was, it was a scary looking rattler. Well, we get snakes under our sun dick in the summertime, especially at night. They like to cool off. Oh, no. Nice. And they'll come, those snakes will just come right in the shade. You got to wear shoes and scorpions and shit. Oh, my God. It so you love real. Austin. You love living here? I love it. <laughs> Pretty cool. I do. I love it. No, it's great. I it think it's great. You don't mind the heat? That no, sucks, yeah. I mean, but still, you. I feel like you... What do you care? You're touring all the time, I know. Tom. He's... You're never home. Do you know where you live? I do. <laughs> it's near the water. <laughs> do you live near the water? I can't say. Oh, oh I know you're. I, I know what you're talking about. I know what. Word. I know what house it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, there's a house by the water up there. I know where it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. <laughs> what kind of chicks are you into? Chicks. All I'm looking for is <laughs> oh a man God. who's willing to explore the wilderness. Hey, trails. I get that. Go on a hike. I get that. I have to say. I think she, I mean, this goes against everything we stand for at YMH. Yeah. She kind of looks hot with it. I feel like if there is a chick to have this armpit hair, it's oh, this Oh, I thought girl. you were talking about the moon. Uh, I didn't even notice the arm hair. I was thinking the moon is really cool. No, she is she pretty. She fits, she's the type of girl that should have armpit hair. Yeah. It looks good on her. I think so. She likes the wild. Yeah, she does. She wants to explore. You could have her on the hiking show. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe that might be a good hike under that arm right there. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of foliage. Yeah, there is a lot. <laughs> Traps a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. What about, okay, Tom, about yeah. her hangers? What do you think about those hangers? Those hangers of hers? Yeah. Yeah, they seem full, plump, you know. Yeah. You like plump. I mean, you know, I don't, I, don't big have, I don't have any complaint about uh, breasts. I, like, I, I just think as a, you know, they're all good. Okay, here's they're my question. Good. Here's yeah. my question for both of you. Yeah. yeah. I've been trying to figure this out a long time. Women... Cannot go topless, say, in most places. Yes. Even if they have no breasts at all, hardly. Yeah. yeah. But a plus size man. Yes. <laughs> who has very big breasts. Yeah. Can walk around anywhere without a bra. Yeah. It's I crazy. Know. So what is the, what should be the rule? Gosh, it's such uh, a good idea. Very I think thought provoking. it's so silly that, that we question. don't allow women to be topless. That's the silly part, you know? But he's saying, I like your point, is that what is the difference? Is no, it a cup it's, size? But, is it an A cup? No, it's she a to, it's a woman. That's the, that's but the, what if she likes to be identified as a man? Mm. Well, that's a, different, that's a whole different thing. That's and, a whole different yeah. can of worms right there. Yeah. Because I think maybe men would lose more weight and get healthier if they had to wear a bra. Well, hold on now. You're not allowed to say that because it's cool to be fat. You no, know, I'm you saying healthier. Fat healthier. Oh, healthier. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you could be as heavy as you want. I'm talking about healthier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here you go. That's a man. Oh, he's sexy. 
kind of love these things, eh? I know I do. I love the weight of them. I love hanging on to them. I'm now, he should wear a bra. Yeah. Me. He's got no penis either. That's a piece of bacon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonder, no, he had those put on. No. Yeah, look at, look at the scars around there. No, no. I know, believe me. First hand. <laughs> <laughs> those are tit cups. He no, suctioned them out. At, no. He oh, that's where them. the red thing is there. Yeah. 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 Oh, so anybody could do that. You can right. do that right oh, now. Oh, sweet. Do you want to try? We actually have uh, a pair. We actually ordered our own stuff. Do you want to put yours in? There's a reason never to get married. <laughs> yeah. How much for you to try tit cups? Both? Yeah. Just let them suction on for like 20 minutes. I don't know how healthy that is, though. Oh, it's I mean, you're fine. Tearing. It's fine. Is it all right? Yes. Can you just do your breasts or can you do your... <laughs> you can do your junk. Yeah. 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 That I might do. Penis cups? You yeah. happy with your anatomy? No. 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 Are you? Is anybody happy with... If there weren't other people around, I'd be happy because I wouldn't have anything to compare to. Mm, good point. But... Do you remember the first time you went into a locker room? Yes. Oh. And guys were walking around. Yes. Old guys. Yeah. With, with their nice balls dicks. dragging. Yeah. yeah, right? And lots of hair and you're like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that like scared me. Scared me too. Uh, there was a, so I was on the swim team when I was like, that's where I know you from. So, yeah. I knew I knew you from somewhere. I'm just killing me. Go, where do I know this guy from? That's right. the swim team. Dude, and because you're in Speedos, and then you see a kid like six years older than you that's also on the, like, the, you know, the other level swim team, and yeah. you're like, I know. What? And you're like, I'm not changing, you know? And then, and then we were uh, middle school basketball. Oh, my God. And, of course, you know, fucking, of course, basketball. There's black kids on the team, and you're like, holy shit never seen anything like this you just kind of like man i guess i'm gonna that's when i started like playing with myself um before getting undressed so i could get a little weight going you know yeah yeah so i get I would, that i, I get that totally and fluff and, yeah i mean i i was a late bloomer yeah i really was i was a late bloomer i was five eight when i graduated high school no you were not i swear to god when you graduated high school when i graduated high school i was five eight. 18 years old five eight yeah five eight no body hair i was so late blooming and I would come back from, let's say we're going to the locker room after a team sport. I didn't play anything, but I, maybe I tried out for something. And I would always get to the locker room first. Even after working out so hard, I would run ahead of everybody. And so I could get changed, take a yeah. shower before people came in and, um, and saw how well endowed I was. Cause I was embarrassed about that, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, no, but you know what I mean? I had like no body hair. Yeah. And these guys all look like my father walking around in there. Crazy. Yeah. You grew seven even. inches in college? Huh? You grew like seven? Yeah. Holy shit. Damn, dog. I, well, yeah, I graduated and I got a job working as a lifeguard on the beach. And maybe it's the sun. Yeah. And <laughs> I was a late bloomer. Like my son no, is, no. is the same way. And he's, the doctor said he's going to be 6'3". Damn. I don't know how they could tell how big know. you're going to be. They, I don't they, know how they tell either. Well, there's a formula they use because they did it in front of me once. Really? They take the, yeah, they take the heights of both of the parents and then they calculate. It's a pretty, it was a pretty simple formula. And then they, they can guess within two, two to three inches. Yeah, <laughs> within seven to eight yeah, inches. Seven yeah, seven to eight inches. No. <laughs> but within two, they said with, I think they said within two inches, the formula yeah. has like a 96% accuracy. You can also do like, I think bone density in your hand or mm -hmm. something. They, they said Here you can do a scan. Add the mother's height to the father's height in either inches or centimeters. Add five inches for boys or subtract five inches for girls and you divide by two. That's the Let me formula. get my calculator out here. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, what's the other? Oh, David Robinson had the most famous growth spurt, I think, that I've heard of. You ever hear about David Robinson's? No. He graduated high school, I believe, 5'9". And he ended up being 7'1". Jesus. What? Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. crazy. He went to the Naval Academy and then they were like, you can't be in any fucking military force. What are you talking about? Giant? I wanted to be a jet. I wanted to be a, a pilot. You're way too tall. Oh, I'm oh. too tall. Yeah, I should have applied when I was in high school. Yeah, true. And I would have grown in the cockpit and I couldn't get out. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. You'd still be flying today. That's true. How yeah. tall is your wife? She's actually seven one. Jesus. <laughs> now she's five seven. Oh. So let's do the formula. Then. Normal okay, six four. Pull it up again. That's seven seven inch difference. All right. So father's height in inches. What's six four in inches? That's uh. 72. So that'd be nine inches uh, together. Right? Three, four, five, six. 76? Yeah. 76 plus two, <laughs> five, seven. Hold on, we're going to do it. What's, okay. uh, what's 72 minus five? 60, 67. 67? Yeah. Plus 
Oh, you got a calculator. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and then plus five. Yeah. And divided by two. Oh, that's scary. So that's uh seventy four. That's six two. Oh. So six two, and then the margin is supposed to be like two inches. Wait a minute. Yeah. Would you divide two right. into seventy four? What? What do you do about 74? What do you, what do, you do with the 74? That's the final number. Oh, that's the number of inches. Okay. Yeah. Right? So it's, that's good to know. 6'2". Thank you, doctor. Yeah. That's nice. a perfect. That's lovely. Yeah. Stop buying, start Tall. buying in pants. and yeah. That is a good yes. level. I'm like just below that freaky level. Right. Tall. Yes. Where I'll, although people see me, they go, oh, you're tall. You know but, that 95% of the population <clears throat> is under 6'4". So you're in, you're in the 5% already. And then yeah. with every inch above that, that percentage goes down. So you are at the, you're at the very bottom of what could be freaky and weird. Yeah. yeah. I'll see somebody really tall and I'll say to my wife, am I that tall? And she'll go, no, 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 no. And sometimes I'll see somebody tall. If I'm alone, I'll kind of stand next to them, look in the mirror. I'm not that tall, but I'm right there though. I'm right, right I'm knocking on the door. Thank God things stopped. That's so funny you do that. I always ask Tom, am I that fat? Yeah, I do too. <laughs> am I that fat? Do I look like I that lady? Yeah. On, I do that too. Don't I say see. fat. It's not good. <laughs> Unhealthy? What's the word? Unhealthy. Inappropriate. <laughs> Unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got your game, man. Yeah. So, um, I got your game. <clears throat> your eyes are hazel, are they? They are hazel. And that's a rare thing too. You're in like the rare air of that. I mean, nobody has a hazel. Is that true? It's very rare. Yes. I like hazel. Well, yeah. That's nice, dude. You're another you anomaly. Blue eyes. Yeah. I'm are brown, brown? doo doo brown. Yeah. You must, are you Mexican doo -doo descent or? Doo -doo I'm doo -doo half brown. Asian, half doo -doo Mexican. Doo -doo yeah. brown. What do you guys do for a hobby? Let's talk about you for a minute. I started a not oil painting, the other one, acrylic. Acrylic. And I'm horrible at it. I gave Tom my first painting. I'm garbage, <laughs> but I like being garbage at something yeah. and just enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I think it was you that kind of inspired me because really? oh. your painting is in the room that I paint in, and I was like, oh, I, like, I want to try that. And I and it was it was encouraging because like, I think people, you know, when you pick something up, you're like, I have to be good at this, and yeah. I'm like, you know what? I don't have to be good at this. No one's gonna see this. Yeah. I don't give a shit. I just I've been, want to do something uh, I've different. I mean, people like raise their eyebrows at this, but I've been collecting uh, Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> but people, here's the thing: no, <laughs> people don't know. How hard it is to get the good stuff. It really you, you get the authentic stuff, not the, the authentic knockoff stuff. <laughs> is, I mean, I have a whole circle of people that I go through. Shit is not easy to get a hold of, man. No, what do you or do with store. it? Yeah. Well, I have like I have Goebbels handkerchief. I got um, I have a Hitler's this, tea set. Remember yeah, that oh, one? Please. Any paintings? Any somebody. paintings by Hitler? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. They're not that good. No, no. Oh yeah, he never was that good. Yeah, but you know, it's still it's kind of like. When you wake up in the morning and you're like, man, Hitler made that. Like it's, <laughs> it really kind of gives you a boost to your day. You know? Sometimes I'll be driving through Hollywood and I'll look at the Ooh. Hollywood sign. Yeah. Those are really oh, good those paintings. Are nice. Hitler There's was nice a good painter. It's good. Tom, which one do you have of these? Uh, that uh, third one from the... You that can't tell they're paint by numbers though, can you? They're really good. <laughs> No, I have that, yeah, the, mount, that mountain, the mountainscape one. Yeah, they right finally there. got that castle one back yeah. because the Nazis confiscated it from Hitler during the war. Oh. And then it ended up in one of the Nazis' homes. So they got it and they gave it back to Hitler's estate. Oh, that's <clears> nice. How lovely. Good. Yeah. <laughs> you, so ever look you ever look at something, they ever look at something like, say, a painting or something, and you think, these are the same images that so and so looked at when they were alive. Yeah. Yes. Like, I'll be driving through Hollywood and I'll look at the hills and I'll think, this is what. Clark Gable looked at when he was driving. Sure. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so yeah. funny. That's my hobby. That is good. That is a good hobby. But Tom, you were uh you you like cars. I know you collect I do. cars. And I also I started going to the racetrack, driving with a, an instructor. Really? Yeah. It's like a hobby. Like Paul Newman. I mean, yeah. I mean better looking version, but yeah, it's like a yeah. I wouldn't cut yourself down. I think you are a good looking guy. He's very handsome. He's very handsome. Yeah. Especially now that he looks healthy. Yes. Thanks. He he looks like a a uh, young Paul Newman, actually, if you look mm. at Paul Newman. All right. Uh, Maybe if he stood on his head, you know? Yeah. Do you ever look, like, you ever look at yourself upside down? <laughs> I have. It's not that great. Not good? No. Oh. Jesus, he was a handsome guy. Paul look Newman. At, that's you, Tommy. Yeah. That red headshot when you were young, a young Tommy Segura. Look at the bottom right. I'm feel, telling feel you. Like yeah. you if, I had been, uh, if I had the F1 driving body, maybe. I did see him once. You yeah, did? yeah. His wife was at a one of these resorts in Massachusetts, you know, where you go for healthy stuff. Yeah, I forget the name of it, but 
he was leaning against the bar um, or the breakfast bar, or whatever, as we were leaving. And I thought, oh my gosh, Paul Newman. I've seen a lot of people like that. I saw Cary Grant once no in shit. the back of a golf cart. First celebrity ever. I was like 10. Kennedy, uh, JFK, sitting in the back. Damn. White hair, big black glasses. I thought, man, he's changed a lot mm-hmm. from when I saw him when I was three. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I met um, Gallagher when sure I was did. nine at a seafood restaurant in the San Fernando Valley, and he signed an autograph for me. And I was like, <gasps> I was so just starstruck. If you got him to sign a watermelon, that would have been worth it. Uh, yeah. I saw, I saw, um, what's the guy? It was uh, the guy, Craig T. Nelson, oh, turned down God. a kid uh, who asked for an autograph at the Orlando Airport. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, like so 12. Mean. It was fucking amazing. No. And I got to see the whole thing, and he came up with the pen, no. and he was like, I was like, here's the one guy we tough to top. Yeah. <laughs> when I first moved to Los Angeles, there was a restaurant on La Cienca called Alan Hale's Lobster Barrel or something. <laughs> and he owned the place and he would come around each table <gasps> and ask, How are you doing? From Gilligan's Island. Oh, Skipper. That's, pretty great. Yeah. that's such a classic Skipper. thing. Here's yeah. the book. It's called I Exaggerate My Brushes with Fame. Kevin Nealon has portraits and stories. Dude, you really are an incredible artist. You really are. Thanks, really, really incredible. You'll like those stories, too. I think you'll be surprised at um, what I give out on some of those. Oh. Can't wait to read this one, you know. Um, <laughs> Is that Hitler? But thank you. Yeah. You Hitler. 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 All the stories the Hitler I have story Hitler. are just incredible. And mis- misunderstood is an understatement. By the way, one quick thing. You could edit this out if you want. Like I said, when I was a kid, I yeah. lived in Germany. Yeah. I lived in a German neighborhood. A lot of the kids were in the military, their parents, so they lived on the army bases. My father worked for a helicopter company, so we lived in a German neighborhood, and a lot of my friends were German. And this is 15 years after World War II. I go over to one of my friend's house, and in the living room is a glass case of German boats. You know, one of those scenes, uh-huh. you know, all the, like, U-boats and yeah. everything. Yeah. And at the time, I was even eight or nine, I thought, this is kind of weird. You know, his father is like in the other room reading the newspaper. Yeah. And I thought, man, this is like some serious stuff here. I better watch who I pick as friends. Yes. yes. But, you know, that transition time was probably interesting for German families that were sure. in the war back then. Especially if they were, well, on the, you know, they had a, on the right team. If you know what I mean. But I did go in the closet and got a shirt for you as a little gift. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank got you. A little, little kind of Nazi kind of stuff oh, on it. Cool, dude. And thank two of the you. boats. I got two of the two, boats. Two, all right. Yeah. Well, I, I I have cash here that I keep at the office. Oh, so. this is on me. Oh, my Perfect. God. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I've been making all these bank runs for no reason. Um, <laughs> you but, can go to the ATM. You don't have to go to the bank. Uh, there's not enough cash well, there's not at enough. the ATM <laughs> for what I get. No. That's um, true. Thank you for coming, though, man. Thank you, Thanks Kevin. for Good having to me, man. I'll, I'll try to hike with you if you're around next week. Yeah, call me. I'm in and out. Okay. When are okay. you going to be there? Um, I, uh, we'll talk in a minute. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, I'll give yeah. you my uh, my digits. Okay. All right. Dang. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. It's umbrella. You don't fuck on the bus, mate. I don't even care if you're fucking homeless. Don't fuck on the bus, cunt. Cunt. that full episode of your mom's house are your jeans as high and tight as it can be i doubt it watch some more clips dude look at that one 
Watch that one right here. Or maybe here. Maybe here. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you should subscribe. That way, every time a new video gets posted, you'll be notified. Stay in the know, jeans. Subscribe now.